स्थापकाय च धर्मस्य सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठाय रामकृष्णाय ते नमः Dear friends, we are now at the concluding section of the second chapter when Sri Krishna defines and describes in a very elaborate manner the signs and symptoms of a realized soul. Why does he say so? Is it only a euphoria? Is it only a section of praising a realized soul? No. The main theme of praising and explaining, describing the signs and symptoms of a realized soul starting from Shloka 55. What does it mean? It means what are the signs and symptoms of a realized soul? Is the object of discipline of an aspiring soul? That is, whatever the lakshanas, signs and symptoms of a sita pragya purusha, that is a brahmagya purusha who has known or establish the identity of his own soul with the divine, with the Atman, his behavior pattern, how he lives in this world. I live in this world, he also lives in this world. There's a ocean of difference between my way of living and their way of living. We live in an egocentric manner, therefore we are victim of attachment, we are victim of aversion, we are victim of six propensities, karma, krodha, loha, moha, mother, masharja. That is how we live in this world. Whereas they live in this world beyond all these weaknesses. Therefore, dears, what the sign and symptoms of a realized soul is, what the sign and symptom of a realized soul is, is what we have to cultivate. That is a discipline imposed on us. That is the purpose of all these lakshanas of realized soul. In the second chapter, he will explain how a Sita Pragya Purusha, Brahmagya Purusha, lives in this world. And we are in the thick of that study. In the third chapter, in the chapter of Karma Yoga, he will say how a Karma Yogi converts his life into an endless interaction with the Divine awareness of the presence of the divine and karma yogi's lakshana will be mentioned for you to emulate to follow and make it your quality of your personality a change of your character a change of yours how you look at this world and how you behave in this world in each chapter, in the fifth chapter, he will describe sannyasi's lakshana. In the sixth chapter, he will describe who is a yaja yogi, so on and so forth, till he ends up in the 18th chapter. All this, in short, Acharya Shankara explains right in the beginning of this chapter as a commentary on the 55th shloka he says sarvatra eva hi adhyatma shastri 
in the adhyatma shastra that is the scriptures where these spiritual matters are discussed and described threadbare krita artha lakshanani yani krita artha means a person who has achieved his goal the signs and symptoms of a person who has achieved the goal should be the object matter of achievement for an aspiring soul siddha purusha's lakshana becomes the sadhana of the sadhaka why because he has achieved and his behavior pattern is spontaneous you have to make an effort to achieve that spontaneity this is what has been said before we have studied and then the most important part is shloka number 62 dhyato vishayan purusha sangnaste shupajayate sangna sanyayate kama krokamat krodho vijayate from this shloka he explains that we ordinary people when we live in this world how do we get attached and involved how spontaneously because of force of habit our sense organs go out receives information brings it back to me and i build castles in the air oh i like this oh i must have it i must make efforts to own it the ball starts rolling or i hate it i must not allow it to happen and the ball starts rolling i am being motivated by my likes and dislikes and that is what an attachment to this world is he explains the procedure and then he explains how to come out of it that is what we have to cultivate that is what we will have to discipline ourselves to develop those faculties and finally he says all this hard work that i am telling you dear will lead to that goal where you will be one with your true original nature the atman or the brahma then he lastly the last discourse we studied in shloka number 69 an example given by contrast where the general people like us are very active very awake very involved and we are fully awake that type of living is absolutely darkness like night for a real soul who wants to reach that goal that is जनरल पब्लिक दैट इज दे आर नॉट एट ऑल इंटरेस्टेड दे स्लीप अवे दे स्नोर अवे दिस वेरी आइडिया ऑफ वननेस विद द डिवाइन does not exist with them and they carry on their life that type of extrovert life is like night for a real mononishila a man who wants to be constantly aware of presence of god he is not awake there he is not involved there he is not aware of that right of life he is not involved it is dark for him what is day for him where people sleep people sleep they are not aware 
of their true original nature. There they are alert. I am the divine. I must manifest the potential divinity already within me. He has given this example by contrast as to what is an attitude of a real soul aspiring to be one with God and what is the attitude of a person who is in absolutely involved in this worldly life. He has been said. Now, three more shlokas remain of this chapter. Of this, the first one which I will study, shloka number 70. That shloka is again an example and a very, very inspiring example. We live in Sydney. We are on the ocean coast, close to the ocean. He makes the ocean an example. What does he say? The ocean as it is, is full to its brim. Full to its brim, it's full up to the shore and the coast and the beaches. Thousands and thousands of rivers and water sources, rainwater, they all go into the ocean. But the ocean does not break its bounds. The ocean absorbs everything and it is achala pratishta. It never shakes never undergoes an upheaval, it absorbs. Apurjamanam achala pratishtam samudramapaha pravishanti jadvat tadvat kamajam pravishanti sarve shashanti mapnoti na kama kabi. Here's an example. What is this example, as I told you, to start with? Example of an ocean. The ocean has its borders and boundaries. In ebb tide and high tide, it comes up and down, but it is all within its limitations. Apart from that, every moment of time, Thousands of rivers all over the world and rainwater ultimately goes to the ocean. But the ocean does not break its boundaries, ocean absorbs everything. achala pratishtam. Though it is full to its brim, but it has that absorbability of all the inflow of water that comes around the whole globe, and it does not lose its boundaries. Apurjamana means full up to the brim. Achala Pratishta means it does not change. Achala, it does not move, it remains, absorbs. This is an example. Samudram apaha pravishanti jadvat. As for instance, water flows into the ocean, ocean absorbs it without breaking its shores, without breaking its boundaries. This is an example. Exemplifying what? A realized soul. Tatha, Tadbat, like that as I told you, Jadbat, Tadbat. As it is in the ocean, similarly in a realized soul, Kamajat Pravishanti Sarve. I live in this world. 
and because of my stimulation of sense organs, I get attached, I get involved, I get desirous, and to fulfill that desire, I get motivated, and I am absolutely at rest till I don't get it. When I get it, I am at rest. But my involvement remains. If something goes wrong, I lose my temper. If somebody stands in fulfillment of desire, I am angry with him. This is what happens to us. To that realized soul, what happens? He lives in this world. He sees everything. He has no, no, no desire left. Why? He is after come. He has received what he desired, oneness with God. That has totally saturated him, like an ocean, totally bound by its shores. And it absorbs water from rivers and rain. That man, whatever you may tempt him with, the temptation goes in and merges with. He is not moved. Tadvat kamajam pravishanti sarve, sarve kaman jadvat jam pravishanti. It enters into him. Sa shanti vapnoti na kama khavi. A person who keeps on desiring, desirous things of the world. He has sold away his soul. He is a victim of his desires and subsequent passions. But this person, he being Aptakam, Aptakam means he has achieved the desire of his life to be one with God. So all the temptations enters into him and he absorbs. If, I, if you remember that Puranic tale of Mahabharata, Kirata Arjuniya. Arjuna was looking out, out where to find Shiva. And Shiva appeared to him as the lowliest of the low as a butcher, professional butcher, hunts, kills and sells for his livelihood, Kirat. And he stands in his way. Arjuna says, I am finding my way to Shiva. And Shiva as Kirata stands in his way and doesn't allow him to go. So Arjuna ch charges him with a battle, arrow and bow. Kirat says, go ahead. Arjuna keeps on sending arrows to him. And to his utter surprise, he finds arrows enter him and dissolve. Enters him and dissolve. Ultimately, Arjuna was exhausted now, who are you? How is it that you are absorbing all these arrows? Then Kirat takes his own form of Shiva. And Shiva is unperturbed by the desires of the world. Shiva means Paramashanti, who cannot be disturbed by any human passion. He is above that. Tadvat kamajam pravishanti sarve sa shanti vapnoti na kama kami. That is, tadvat shanti vap, tadvat kamajam pravishanti sarve. Just like ocean, all the desires and temptations come to him. Don't think he is a piece of timber or a stone that he doesn't know. 
He knows everything. Everything comes into him. He absorbs. He doesn't allow that to have a hold on him. Let me read the shloka now and you will understand. Apur Yamanam, full up to the brink. Achala Pratishta, but it cannot be taken out of its shore. It is contained, self-contained. Samudram Apaha Jadbat Pravishanti. Water enters that ocean without allowing it to spill over. It is absorbed and the ocean maintains its shores. Though it is full up to the brim, the water is being absorbed. Without any turbulence, without any restlessness, without any change in the ocean. Tadbat, that is as for instance, then and there, as and when it happens, Tadbat Kamajam Pravishanti. Sarve, Sarve Kamanjat Pravishanti. All the desires of life, when it enters into the realized soul, Sashanti Mapnoti Nakavakavi. That realized soul, his state of peace and blissfulness is unchangeable, but not a person who desires the desire. <coughs> He is a victim of desire, and desire has no effect on him. This is a sign and symptom of a realized soul. I will give you an example. One gentleman in Calcutta, a very famous multimillionaire, maybe a billionaire, he heard that in Dakshineshwar there is a saint, whatever he wishes it happens. So being desirous of fulfilling his desire of being more and more wealthy, he thought he will purchase Sri Ramakrishna with his gifts and etc., and make Sri Ramakrishna do as he desires. So he comes to Sri Ramakrishna. And when he sends up, gives a proposal, I will give you tons of money. Please stand by me and see all my wishes are fulfilled. Sri Ramakrishna said, it was like a wooden stick be hit on my head. His offer appeared to me like a wooden stick on my head. And my mother possessed me and I rebuked him and I threw him out of my presence. Sadhaka Bhava. That he was still on sadhana. This was a temptation, and the mother showed him this temptation will make you unconscious as a hit on your skull with a lati makes you unconscious, is going to make you unconscious. Beware. And in another occasion, Mathur Babu, out of sheer love, gave him a very, very costly shawl, a Kashmiri shawl. And one day Mathur Babu sees that Sri Ramakrishna absolutely making into a ball and rubbing on ground. Why? To him, 
that costly shawl and dust in the ground was the same. And Mathur Babu said, my dear father, he used to address him as Baba, my dear father, I wanted to test you and I find now what it is. Sri Ramakrishna looked at him and smiled. Nakama Kami. That is Kama Kami Purusha. Kama Kami means people who are desirous of fulfilling their desires. Kama Kami. People who are desirous of fulfilling their desires. They will never achieve peace. But he will achieve peace who sa shanti vadigachati, sa shanti maapnoti. He is full of shanti who, who lives in this world like an ocean, undisturbed by incoming mass of water. He absorbs and doesn't break his show. It is always full. The next shloka, we are now coming to a close. And the next shloka is para concluding shloka. Bihaya kamaan japuman, bihaya kamaan sarvan. I'm sorry, let me read it again. Bihaya kamaan sarvan, puman charati nishpriha. Nirmama Nirahankara Sa Shanti Adigachati. How to achieve peace? This is the question. I want peace in life. How to achieve peace? He tells you how to achieve peace. And I'll tell you an incident from Ramana Maharshi. Let us read the shloka first. Bihaya kaman ja sarvan. Sarvan kaman ja bihaya. Sarvan kaman. The whole world of desire. Whatever it may be. The whole world of desire. Excepting one. Desire to manifest the potential divinity in me or to desire to be one with God. That is excluded. That does not fall under so-called desire. You understand me? And as it is said in our scriptures, the bitterness of a bitter gold is not bad, it is good as a medicine. So there is a bitterness, which is bad in taste, but that is good for my health. Similarly, of all desires are not welcome, excepting one desire. To be one with God, the desire to be one with God, desire to manifest the divinity already within us. Be higher. Sarban Kaban. The whole world of desires a person is capable of rejection. Pumans Charati Nishpriha. Puman is plural, punksha, that a human being, male or female, it's immaterial. A human being who lives in this world without being a victim of desire, and he lives in this world, nirmamaha, mamatta rahita, Nir ahankara, ahankara rahita, sa shanti vapnot. Sri Krishna says, the divine lord of the universe says, he is a person who becomes one with eternal peace. Apnoti, 
अभिन्नतया प्राप्नोति आपनोति मीन्स ही रिसीव्स इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ रिसीविंग ही सैचुरेटिंग हिज बीइंग विद दैट एंड अ टाइम कम्स ही बीज एंड बिकम्स वन विद पीस he has become peace himself personified so what are the conditions to be at peace with yourself and with the world and be peace personified ja sarvan kaban bihaya nishpriha bhavati first a person whoever he may be she may be a person who has been able to reject the influence of desire working within him and with that attitude he lives in this world without any desire nishpriha he does not allow any desire to enter into him and he roams around in this world without any desire at all he is happy to live his life come what may jadrichalava santushta that is whatever comes my way i am happy if it is starvation i am happy if it is a feast i am happy i ask nothing i want not i seek not these are the typical words which translates this idea i want not if it comes to me and i don't go seeking for it nishpriha i want not i seek not and i have totally rejected the motivation of being desirous in the meantime nirmamah mamatva rahita what is mamatva rahita that very strong attitude of me and mine me and mine oh this book is mine oh this jacket is mine i love it please handle it carefully don't tear it fold it properly don't abuse it don't miss you keep it carefully i am involved in its welfare because i have extended myself to that attached to my belongings that does not mean you will go refresh with it no that is another aspect i'll come to you later on in bhakti shastra in the 12th chapter everything is god's not mine therefore it's my duty to maintain god's things correctly properly thoroughly look at that change of your attitude as a vedanti as a sanyasi you are absolutely unresponsive to the world whatever happens to you without wanting it without going to seek for it want not seek not live in this world and don't allow the desires to ruffle you let the desires be absorbed as kirata absorbed the arrows or the ocean absorbs the water nirmama mamatva rahita don't ex- extend your attachment to anything else but there is nothing known as anything everything is divine nirmama nir ahankara ahankara is being very very aware of your excellence i am a scholar i am learned i am this i am that i am so i am so none of those you are 
one of the many and one in the many. Nobody is better than you, nor are you better than the others. We are all mother children. If you can cultivate this attitude in your life, then know for certain you will be one with the concept of eternal peace, tranquility, ecstasy, sobriety, serenity, joy. This is what will happen to you. Bihayad sarvan kaman, jah puman charati nishpriha, bihaya kaman jah sarvan, pumans charati nishpriha, nirmama o nirahankara, sa shanti adhigachati. Esha Brahmi Stiti Partha Enam Prapya Bimujjati Na Enam Prapya Bimujjati Stitva Asyam Antakalepi Brahma Nirvanam Richati Let us read the shloka first, explain to you word to word then I'll explain to you the inner meaning of the shloka. He says, Esha Brahmi Stiti Partha. He Partha, He Arjuna. I am now concluding. From the 55th shloka to 72 shlokas. 18 shlokas. Brahma Stiti is Lakshana. Brahmi sthiti is a lakshana, the signs and symptoms of a realized soul. Esha, all these shlokas in which thousands and thousands of different ideas I have developed for you to have a very clear vision of who is a Brahmanga Purusha. E. Why? because you have to practice them diligently with discipline, determination, devotion, dedication. Then slowly and slowly and slowly you will absorb those ideas and the absorption will be complete one day when your I-ness, your personality, will be saturated with that and you be one with your ideal. This is the procedure of being and becoming. Process of evolution. Esha, all this I have said previously. Brahmi to be well poised, unmovably, irremovably well poised in the awareness of oneness with Brahman. I am Atma Brahma, Aham Brahmasmi. This experience will dawn in you by your efforts. Esham Brahmi Sthiti Partham Enam Prapya Na bimujjati. Once you have identified your true original nature, I am Atma Brahma, what I call as I am, I am, I am. This I am is nothing else but Brahma. I am Atma Brahma, Aham Brahmasmi. Esha Brahmi Stiti. This is the experience that you are supposed to acquire. Enam prapya na bimujjati. Once you know who you are, you will never forget it. As for instance, you know yourself as Mr. So and so. I was told on my day of sannyas 
that look, young boy, you will be known as Sri Dharananda. I have identified myself with this name. What is the meaning of the name? Sri Dhara Ananda, one who enjoys being one with Sri Dhara. Who is Sri Dhara? Another name of Lord God of Universe, Narayana Vishnu. <coughs> I was told, this is your name. This is the meaning of your name. Now try to remember all the time. This is what you are. Identify yourself with that. So I have identified myself with that sound, Sridharananda, to such an extent I am deep asleep and you come and say, Sridharananda, wake up, it is time. And I just shut Who is calling me? That is the depth of my identification with the sound, not with the beam. Brahm is, it means Esham. All these ideas from 55th Shloka, Prajahati, Jada, Kaman, Sarban, Partha, Manogata. That is how it started and now it is coming to a close. All these ideas that I have told you, they are nothing else but thousand and one different approaches to reach the divine, to be one with the divine. Once you achieve that experience, You'll never, never lose it. It is your true identity. Esha Brahmi Stiti Partha Nainam Prapya Bimujati. Please break it up. Enam Prapya Na Bimujati. Having achieved which, you can never, never make a mistake again. Sitva Asyam Antakalepi. The last moment of this life of yours. You're, say, practicing for last 70 years. Last 80 years. You're practicing, practicing. You have not yet achieved. At the last moment of your life before you pass your last breath, pranvayu nisharana, exhalation of your last breath, at that moment, if you happen to experience that, brahma nirvanam richati, you have achieved. You have not to come back again. You have merged with the absolute. Esham Brahmi Stiti Partha Enam Prapya Na Bimujati Stitva Asyam Antakalipi. If you can manage to experience that Antakala at the last breath of your life, you will be a realized soul. You will not be a victim of this cycle of birth and death, you will be merging with Absolute. The last moment of this life of yours is the opportunity given to us to work out our destiny, to manifest the divinity, which is our true original nature. With this, my dears, the second chapter has been thoroughly revised. It speaks of Karma Yoga. It speaks of Sankhya Yoga. She theoretically establishes what is Atma Jnana, Brahma Jnana. And at the last section from 55 shloka to shloka number 72, in these 18 shlokas, Sri Krishna in great elaborate manner describes 
the signs and symptoms, behavior pattern, mannerism of a realized soul from thousand different perspectives, attitudes and viewpoints and perspectives. Choose anyone that you like, but perform your disciplines of life to know thyself, your true original nature. With this dear, the second chapter is fully revised. Now comes the third chapter. The third chapter has been nomenclatured or titled as Karma Yoga. There are two words in Sanskrit and in common language, Karma Bhoga and Karma Yoga. Bhoga means to experience the results of my activity. As for instance, I am doing my best, my very best to explain to you some aspect of the Gita. If I am not alert, a hope, and that hope will mature into a desire, will grow in me. What is that hope and desire? My listeners will understand. Not only that, they will understand me and they will appreciate me, admire me, praise me, and adore me. Oh, what a wonderful teacher. If I am not very careful, all these will happen to me. And after the talk, you come and tell me, Oh, Swami, it was wonderful. And I, because my hope and desire is being fulfilled, I'm being admired, I'll strike the roof. I'll be full of joy. And the other person, absolutely honest and sincere, comes and tells me, Swami, I understood nothing. Swami's hope turns into despair. Swami's desire turns into sadness. And Swami is totally disappointed. What has Swami done to him, himself? What has he done? He has made himself a victim of expectation of hope and joy and praise and admiration. That expectation when fulfilled, he is in cloud nine. When not fulfilled, he is depressed. Swami has made himself a creature, a pawn in the hands of public opinion. He has bartered away his soul. This is karma bhoga. You are doing your duties. Correctly, thoroughly, perfectly, excellently, but you are not managing yourself. So you become a victim of your karma phala, and you are up and down. You swing like a pendulum between pleasure and pain, joy and ecstasy, sadness and this is karma bhoga. What is karma yoga? The third chapter will teach you how to live in this world, how to continue with all your responsibilities. Even a householder, a family man, a separated man, a divorced man or man without a family. You have to fulfill your social duties, 
you have to live and earn and make yourself alive, keep yourself alive. Do everything. Karma Yoga teaches you how to live in this world, where you are not a victim of your karma phala. You do not suffer the results of your expectation. You are all above it. You have brought in the awareness of divine in your life. This is how the third chapter starts, dear. And as this is important, the Karma Kanda, Karma chapter, Karma Yoga chapter is very important. We will think of it from many points and we will explain. But before I conclude, I have an announcement. The announcement is, after this Sunday and Saturday, for certain reasons which are not avoidable, unavoidable reasons, there will not be two Sunday classes, two Saturday classes. That is, I will start again on the 21st of November and 22nd of November. 21st November, we'll start the Upanishads. I hope to complete the second khanda of the first Mundaka tomorrow, tomorrow and we will finish it. And this Sunday, tomorrow means this Sunday. Saturday and Sunday we will finish the study and then we will have a break for two Sundays. We meet again on third Saturday and third Sunday. In the meantime, as because it is parked in the YouTube, Please kindly keep that lesson with you. Kindly keep acquainted with that idea so that you can help yourself. Thank you. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu